Any advice for not overeating healthy, nutritious food? Most of my diet is well balanced, but sometimes I find myself overeating chicken and whole wheat pasta, etc. I can relate to this because I like to eat and I've got a, you know, a healthy appetite, sometimes too healthy. <laughs> um, how do you go about this, Jeff? Like not overeating the good stuff, right? Yeah, it's hard. I got a, I got a big appetite too. Um, I go by how I feel. So I try to eat slowly. That's um, I try to tr try to drink water in between bites, um, mm -hmm. try to put the fork down try to eliminate distractions, um, take my time. Yes. And then, and just pay attention. Like it, it, the way I gauge it, I try to keep it really simple. Like if I get done a meal and I can go for a brisk walk afterwards, then I'm, I'm good. If I feel like I got to go lie down on the couch, <laughs> take some Tums and <laughs> fall yeah. asleep for like, <laughs> for a little while, then, then I, clearly, yeah. I overdid it. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm guilty. I love to eat. And I feel like most, I like, I'm a, like a lot of bodybuilders and people who lift weights do like to eat. Um, yep. So you just got to pay attention to your body and 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 mm -hmm. just be mindful. Be mindful of how you feel and don't just be a vacuum and just, you know, shovel. Yes. Yeah. Take your time. Those are some some solid tips for sure. And first off, we should address like from a, a practical point of view, it's hard to overeat to the point where you get obese from healthy food like if you're really eating natural unprocessed foods you know your, your protein and your vegetables and your good you know high volume complex carbohydrates and stuff it's it's hard to overeat to you know such an extreme calorie surplus that one gets obese right? I've, I've never seen it personally because virtually everybody that i know who's like extremely overweight there's a lot of processed food in their diet the majority of their diet is processed foods right mm. Um, but with that being said, you can still eat too much, right? I mean, I've been guilty of this sometimes because, again, you just like to eat. But the big ones you mentioned there, slowing down, like literally try and pace yourself. Because we live in this fast food, I'm in a hurry environment where like I wake up, I'm late for work or I'm late for school or whatever. And I got to wolf down my breakfast, get it in me as fast as possible. Then on your lunch break, you know, oh, we're, we're, we're pressed for time. You know, wolf down your, your lunch as fast as you can. And we're always in this eat fast, like not slowing down, savoring and enjoying the food. It's always like just fast food, fast food and, and, and never fully embracing the meal and the experience. So like slowing down and actually chewing the food, you know, like making sure that you chew it more often. And I'm not going to give you a, a number. Like some people say, oh, make sure to chew your food 30 times per bite or something like, but chew it more than you are now. <laughs> Like purposely add a few extra chews there so that you can savor and enjoy the food. And this also helps with the digestion process because the more you chew it, the more you're breaking it down, the more the natural digestive enzymes from your saliva is getting in there. It'll just help with your gut health and the digestion utilization of those nutrients when you chew your food more. But it also gives you more time under taste because if you took a smaller meal and you ate it over the course of 20 minutes, you're getting a lot of time under taste and basically like the same eating pleasure as if you took a bigger meal, but you just woofed it down. Right. So that, like we always talk about time under tension with our workouts. So I say time under taste when it comes to our nutrition, right? That's a good thing to think of, but it takes 20 minutes for your brain and belly to link up that you're full. So if you eat fast, like you can put away a lot of food in 20 minutes, right? If you're just, you know, like the conveyor belt fork to the plate, to the mouth and just, just this nonstop, <laughs> right? So you mentioned putting the fork down is a powerful strategy as well, but purposely slowing down. That's a big mm -hmm. one. Uh, and I think drinking, drinking water too, like that way your stomach gets to expand and feel full. That helps mm -hmm. a lot as well. Also eating foods that are harder to eat. And what I mean by that, like foods that require you know, you, you, like, for example, if you have a, a steak and you have to cut it up and you have to chew it more, like you just can't wolf down a steak or you, I suppose some people can, but you shouldn't, right? You like, you got to cut it up and you got to chew it and that. 
so foods that take more more time to to cut up and chew and that helps a lot uh, i also like to start with like if especially with a bigger meal because i think this is where where you're going to tend to overeat is usually at those bigger meals and i always start with a big garden salad like that's my appetizer so i'm pre-filling the belly with high volume of, of, of vegetables and those high volume foods so that's mm. gonna take the edge off my hunger and plus it's gonna take you know longer to eat and then it helps to link up that you know that 20 minute time frame from the, the time that takes your brain and belly to sync up to your full so that takes up a good portion of that time and then when i start eating the more denser foods you know the protein and the starchy carbs and things like that uh, it just by the time i've eaten my share i'm comfortably full yeah yeah mm -hmm. And being consciously aware of it, that, that's that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so another thing we can look into is the food choices. I mean, he mentioned whole wheat pasta. I mean, not saying there's anything wrong with it, but that is a more calorie dense food and it's easier to eat pasta yeah. than it is like potatoes or sweet mm -hmm. potato or something along those lines. Like that, that's yeah. another strategy if, if you're trying to minimize your food consumption and get maximum eating satisfaction look for higher volume options so if you had 50 grams of carbohydrates from pasta or 50 grams from sweet potato you would get a lot more full and feel more satiated from the sweet potato because it's higher in volume right? more water volume more fiber volume and it's it takes longer to eat it yeah i'm glad you touched on that because <laughs> pasta i could put away so much pasta oh, man. yeah <laughs> easily yeah <laughs> growing it's up in an italian home i just like i grew up on pasta so i yeah, yeah but if you have like a potato you have like one potato right with, with and dinner. it was filling you know that that potato but you know plate of pasta you just wolf it down and like there, there's a lot of carbohydrates in a plate of pasta and then of mm -hmm. course it's not just the pasta but you got to have it drowned in pasta sauce or whatever you have with it you know it's it's a lot more to it <laughs> so yeah mm -hmm. you know, it, it compounds even though a lot of people say well it's it's healthy i mean it's it's the more calorie dense version right so if you are yeah. trying to keep your calories in check you know you might want to look for lower uh, higher volume lower calorie dense food options more often 